and gentlemen, coming to the stage, please put your hands together for the fabulous, for the soul of Fat Two, Sadie Sar. <laughs> In Senegal, we sit on the floor and we listen to grandma or maybe my uncle. Anytime they start, it goes. Lebon, Lipon, Amon Nafi, Dan Naam. In the city of Detroit, there is more than 33,000 African immigrant families. On a weekly basis, they fight deportation. They show up to court. These are their stories. March 2009, I still recall sitting in the bed in her home. Auntie Sadie, I heard a loud I got up, and then there were flashing lights. I went to the door. Oh my God, here they are. They have boots, you know, those military boots, khakis, the guns. <gasps> here he is, pinned against the wall, my daddy. Then my mom shooted me away. I closed the door and I wait. Then she cries over the phone. Then Uncle Usainu shows up. It's not eat today. Then they talk. Then daddy's gone. It was a long time before he come back. Auntie Sidi, what am I gonna say? Listen, Astro. When we make it to that office, at Mish McConnell office, just say the same thing. But Auntie Sidi, do you know how does it feel when I'm at school among all these children? And I'm thinking, you know, is mom and dad gonna come home today? And I can't talk to nobody. Auntie said, I was eight. Do you know how it feels to see your father at eight being taken by the police? As to, I really don't know. But you tell them. Two thousand eighteen. I'm sitting in my car for sitting on the curves. Hey, Howland, hurry up. We need to go to prayer. Today's Friday. I can't miss Juma. Tell your cousin to hurry up. Yeah, I know I hate missing Juma. We got in the car, hit the corner. The phone rings. Sadie, Sadie, c'est papa, c'est papa. Hey, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. C'est papa, ils l'ont pris. They took my father. Uh, hold on, hold on. Fanta? Yes, Sadie, where are you? I am um, in the car. They took daddy, I have to go pick up the car. Me and mom have to go. Hold on, Fanta, you go where? To the ICE office, I'm on my way. So we rush and we go to her mom and here we are trying to figure out how we're gonna get there and a decision has to be made. I'm like, okay, let's go. We get to the office, we walk into the office and the agent is waiting for us. So we got a call, we came to pick up the car. Who car? Bani Dumbia car. The car is back outside with the key, the keys in the car. So we stopped the keys in the car. Um, he said, he said, put the keys in the car. We walk out the office, went into the car, and the car is locked. We came back into the office. And we like, the car is locked. And he said, well, he said to leave the keys in there. Then he looked at us and he said, who reports here? Me and Fanta look at each other. Nobody. Who are you? I'm the daughter, Fanta Dumbia. Who are you? My name is Sadie. I'm an immigrant rights activist. Who's Miriam? Fanta cringe. I'm like, it's mom. She's at home. We called Miriam, but she can't drive. Oh, okay. Well, the kid in the car. Fanta is upset. She wants to talk about her dad. I'm like, Fanta, let's go. She looked at me. I'm like, let's go. We walked out the door. And I said, they were trying to get your mom. 
are you serious? I'm like, why would she ask for a hoodie pot here? That's your, only your mom hoodie pots here. Why would they put the kids in the car? What we're gonna do now, we have to put the petition together. We have to let people know, we have to make an action because we have to make sure we have to find a way to get him here, to have him stay. Then we go and the action starts. We call in every day, free Papa Dubuya. We send letters. We do everything we can. We have to find a lawyer. Each lawyer we talk to, ask them $20,000. <clears> we can't afford $20,000 for representation. Two weeks later, my phone rings again. This time, it's asked to Toure. Madame Toure, her husband, Katim, have been in the country for 27 years. He went to report to ICE and same scenario. They kept him again. She calls me, I have to go pick up the car. Pick up the car and I promise, I promise we're gonna get him out of jail. First of all, we have to find him because they don't tell us where they are. So we go online and we look for two days, answer, we don't know where he is in his Monroe County Jail. Maybe they took him to Indiana. Then we found him, he's in Calhoun County. On Thursday, I said, Nixon, I'll go see him on Saturday. Saturday, I take the children. We drive an hour and 15 minutes. Make it to Calhoun County Jail. We checked in. Then the guard looked at me, looked at the girls. He said, are you the mom? Shake my head. They can't get in. What? Yeah, the parents are the only one who have the clearance to get them in. Uh, we come from Detroit. They can wait in the living room, in the waiting room. I'm mad, I walk upstairs. Here he is, his hair is nicely cut. And I'm smiling, I'm like, hey, how are you? You good? He said, I'm fine. I say, oh, you look good, you have your hair cut? He said, yeah, one of the brothers got me. Are you eating well? How is Ramadan going in there? He said, good, there's a couple of Muslims in here. We do jamaat together. Really? He said, yeah, there's a bunch of Arabs here, you know. I said, yes, I know. He said, but you know, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Then, like the kids are downstairs, the smile fade. He's like, Sadie, did you call the consulate? Yes, I did. Tell them don't give out my travel document. I will make sure, because I can't go. You have to pay the bills, I, I'll take care of it. Don't pay the car bill, don't pay the insurance. They're gonna come get the car anyway. But really, make sure the house bills are paid. My wife, she need to pay the bill for the, for the shop too. I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll get it, we'll get it, we'll, get, we'll take care of it. Sadie, I don't have nothing in Senegal. I've been here for too long. My kids, they need me. My wife, she needs me. Then you're not going nowhere, Katim. Believe me, you're not going nowhere. Are you sure? What did the consulate say? I said, you know, he said everything is fine. I'll see you next week. I lied. That morning, I called the consulate, they had already given his travel document. His deportation was impeding. I drive the kids home. Two days later, as to call me and I'll get to the house. And the kids are watching me, the phone ring, I pick up and he's like, hey, I made it home safe and sound. Say, how is your mom? She's good. I'm going to the village tomorrow. Hey, take care of my family. I say, I will. Say it. They don't have nobody no more. I say, I know. I will. I hang up the phone then. Rokhaya looked at me and she said, Auntie Sadie, do you know how does it feel for all this time to have your dad, the one who take you to school, take you places, take you to after school program, take you to practice? Do you know how does it feel? You're 13 and one day, he take you to school and never shows up. I just give her a hug. I just give her a hug. I don't know how it feels, I see how it feels. May 2018, Papa Dumbuya is still not free. It's happened now to the more than two months and we're still trying to make sure he stays here. I can't let Papa Dumbuya go. When I decided to run for office, he was so proud of me. Papa Dumbuya, you see, 
have been in the city of Detroit for 28 years. He has three businesses. He's employing eight people. None of his children never had to work to go to school. All the girls, they're in college. But for Dumbia own a house, everybody knows him. Somebody called and was like, hey, is he still here? Yes, he's still here. You know, he can't go. When I was going to school, he used to take me to school. You know, he used to take me all the way to Pontiac, man. I call him and he'll pick me up and drive me there and bring me back. I can't believe he's a good man. I say, I know. Then somebody say, hey, Papa Dumbia, man, anytime you call him, he comes. My first car, I didn't buy it. Yes, we know because Papa Dumbia used to go to the auction and buy cars and in his time fix it. And if somebody in the community needs it, he let you have it. And here we're sitting here and they say he's a criminal, he needs to be deported. And we're fighting to make sure he ain't deported. In June, we got a call. Officer Tanner was gonna take him to the airport today. As I'm sitting at the office, me and his daughter Nabinto are trying to figure out in which plane they're gonna get him. We're looking at the computer, it's 4.30. So she's checking it, I'm checking it, because all day long he was not showing up in the detainee locator, which means he is not incarcerated no more, so they must be in transit. We're checking at the flights, Ivory Coast. By five days, only three flights left. Nabintu is like, what can we do? I said, I don't know, you know, we could go at the airport. She said, man, what would you do? I don't know, you know, at least if they deport your father, you, you know, you remember that you went down fighting. She's like, yeah. I said, let me check. I sent out a message to Natalie, and I'm like, hey, Nat, do you think you can get me 20 people at the airport? Nat is like, bet. Next thing, I look at my phone, and Fianne is asking me, where are we going to meet? Where are we meeting? And I'm like, oh, my God. Nabintu, where's Fanta? She must be at home. You go get her girl. Now? Uh, yeah, people are going to the airport right now. Oh, my God. We walk out, the office running. I got in my car. She will get her kids. As I'm driving to the airport, everybody's calling me. Where are we meeting? I don't know. Maybe I'm going to Delta Airport right now because it's an international flight. Make it to Delta. Here is Amy Ducure. Here is Asha Noor. And they come in little by little. We're trying to figure out what's going on. Nothing. We look at the board. Nothing. Then the phone rings. I picked it up and it's, it's, it's Nabintu. She's frantic. They see my dad, they see my dad. I'm like, no, where? I don't see your dad. Sadie, somebody see my dad right now. Somebody just called me. The officer said she was trying to get in. She got to be at the airport. Where are you? I'm at the airport. No, where are you? I am at Delta. No, Sadie, you have to run. He is at United Airlines. Then I'm like, oh my God. What are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? We start running and Tahir is like, okay, let me take you, leave your car. So she gets in her car, I jump with her. Ashen is already gone. She didn't even wait. We make it to United Airlines and everybody's pointing to me. Like, look, look, what, what? Amy is like, he just, it was him right there, that's the back. No, then you see him, they just shoved him through the door. I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? Yeah, we, we made it here and we saw them taking him through the door. Then here I look up and Rashida Talib is walking up to me and she's like, what's going on with the protest? I'm like, Rashida, they just took him. She said, what you guys gonna do? I said, I don't know, we, they, I, we, we, we were late. And she said, but you have to chant. I'm like, chant? She's like, yeah, you, you do an action, right? I'm like, yeah, she said, you're an organizer, yes. She said, okay, chant. Yeah, all here, you know, you have your sign, what you waiting for? It's a protest. I said, yeah, you're right, but they just took him. She said, just chant, man. I said, okay, let's chant. Free Papa Dumbu, yeah. Separating families. Delta is done with separating families. American Airlines is done with separating families. We're sitting on the floor and we're singing. 
we're singing, the police is coming, and we are just singing. I'm looking at them, and I'm getting scared because now there was two policemen, now there is three and four. I look at Rashida Talib, and she just looked at me, and she, she signaled, don't let it go. So we're making up songs, and we're sitting here, we're singing, she's talking to the police. More of them are coming, they're asking us, hey, do you have a permit? We're just singing. What you doing here? When you're gonna go? We're just singing. Who create, who, who, who allowed you to be here? Who did you ask permission to? We just keep singing. Rashida, in that time, she's just talking. She's just talking, she's buying time. I'm looking at Nabin she's on the phone. She's calling corporate to make sure that United Airlines is not gonna take somebody who don't wanna be on a plane without a passport because he don't have a passport. He don't have a travel document. How are you gonna have him go all the way to Africa without a passport? She's on the phone, she's talking. We're singing, she's talking. Then the time is flying. By now, it's 7.15. Boarding is finished. We keep singing. I can't believe this. They are about to take him away from us, away from his family, away from 28 years put in this country, away from everything he loves. I'm singing. I'm looking. Then I begin to look at her phone and she signaled to me and I came. She's like, is this true? I look at the phone and it says, Bani Dumbuya's flight canceled. I'm like, are you serious? She said, yes. The flight is canceled. What does it mean? I don't know what does it mean. This never happens. Nabin to they take them away. But it says the flight is canceled. I know. Then I see Natalie in the crowd. She's moving. She's cheering. And she said, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We all went to her. She had the same news. Oh, my God. Papa Dumbuya's flight was canceled. He was got off the plane. Oh, my God. Wow. What's next? I don't know. This never happened. We hug. We prayed. Then we said thank you to our state rep. Because any time we called, Rashida Talib showed up. At any protest we called, she had showed up. She's like, I'll talk to you later. I'm like, Rashida, thank you. Then we decided to pray one more time, and we left the airport. I'm driving home, and I can't believe this. This never happens. This never happens. By this time in May, I had already lost 37 folks that was all taken away from me living here in Detroit. This never happens. The day after we wake up, and he is not showing in the detainee locator, what's going on? So we're calling, we're making calls, and we find out that they took him all the way to Chippewa County. Chippewa County is five hours away from here. In Chippewa County, I cannot go visit him. The family cannot go make sure he's okay. We cannot send a pro bono lawyer in Chippewa County to drive five hours, talk to him for 30 minutes, and drive back five hours. They are fighting us, and we need to fight back. So now we have a petition. Now we're asking for a stay of removal. Now we're writing letters and we're calling every day. Five weeks went, go by, nothing move. Six weeks go by, nothing move. This is September. This is September. The family is like, what is going to happen? I don't know. We have to keep on pushing because that's all what we have to do. But they don't have his passport, Sadie. How are they going to deport him? They shouldn't be able to deport him without a passport. Yes. But you remember, Nabinto, a passport is not a privilege when you're black. A passport is not a privilege when you come from a country that is not a non-Western country. Only white folks with Western countries' name have a passport that allow them to go spend the evening in Cancun when they want to. For the other brown and black folks from non-Western countries, your passport is not a privilege because you have to pay for a visa. Somebody has to allow you. You have to stand in the door and ask. And if you make the mistake and come at the border, at the point of entry where they say you can ask for asylum, they take you away and they rip your children away from you. So yeah, they might be able to deport him without a passport. They don't need his passport. He's from Ivory Coast. They didn't need his passport. This week, on Monday, he was moved from Chippewa County to Louisiana. The family did not know. Now we're trying to find out who in Louisiana can help and go check on him and see if Papa Dumbuya is okay. Three days after that, they moved him 
to Arizona. Yesterday, Papa Dumbuya was sent home in Ivory Coast. The family didn't have to say goodbye. He called and said he's in Ivory Coast. On his plane, there was Malians, Guineans, Senegalese. He said that the plane stopped and dropped all these Africans back home without a passport. Separating families happen every day in our city. When we talk immigration, we forget that people like me are also immigrants. And our stories never get told. And I'm left as a community organizer, an immigrant rights organizer, to sit in this house and tell to these 14 and 15 and 18 year old that their parents are not immigrants. Their parents are not criminals. Their parents are just hard workers. I have to validate for them that these people who was taken away from them did not do nothing wrong, but just try to get a shot to a better life in the United States. And unfortunately, they had the wrong color and the wrong accent. And that's the only reason why they cannot stay here. Because the president decided that he didn't want nobody from shit home country, and he rather have immigrants from Norway. Next time you take your passport to go to Cancun, remember that you didn't do nothing to deserve that passport. That privilege was given to you based on the skin color or the country you come from. Have a blessed day. Fatou Sadie Sarr.